Hey everyone, this is Project SPC. It's been a while since I uploaded a video, but this came in the mail yesterday. So let's do an unboxing video and eGPU test. So this isn't a first time unboxing. I did open up my GPD when Max to download some stuff, but I haven't touched anything else in the box. We've got this nice little blue box, simple design. We've got some padding underneath. And thanks to DHL, my package came one day early, but there was a little bit of damage on the one side. Thankfully, everything looks okay inside the box. GPD Win Max. Let's go ahead and pull that out. It's in a nice little protective sleeve here. And you're going to see my fingerprints all over it because I did open it up already. We've got the charger. And a USB-C to C cable here. And last, we have a little manual here underneath the GPD WinMax. Let's go over the GPD WinMax itself. I'm not gonna go into too much detail. You can see the specs for this device in the description below. But in summary, this is a beast of a handheld. It's got a Core i5 Ice Lake processor. It's got four cores, eight threads, turbo up to 3.7 gigahertz. It's got Intel Iris Plus graphics, which are some of the best integrated graphics you can get from Intel at this moment, not including Tiger Lake that's coming up. We have eight, 16 gigabytes of LPDDR4, 3733 megahertz RAM, and it comes with a 500 gigabyte NVMe SSD. So for the size, we've got a lot riding under the hood. The device itself sports an 8-inch touchscreen up to 10 points, 800p resolution. On the bottom, we have a compact sized keyboard. It is fully functional. You can put all eight of your fingers and type. I wouldn't type a 15 page paper on this, but it is certainly usable for short and intermediate time frames for typing. We've got a trackpad, which is a new feature for a GPD Win de device. We have the integrated X input controller here with the associated select menu and start up here. On the back, we have the corresponding shoulder buttons and an array of ports. Starting from this side, we have the USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-C port, Thunderbolt 3 port, two USB Type-A ports, 3.0, and an HDMI input jack. On the bottom here, you can see the exhaust for the cooling system. And on the underside, you can see the inlet for the air. On this side, we have a slider that goes between gamepad and mouse input mode. In mouse input mode, the joysticks get reconfigured as a mouse and shoulder buttons get reconfigured as mouse clicks. On this side, we have an ethernet jack and a micro SD slot. And finally, on the front of the device, we have a microphone and a headphone jack. So let me give you my first impressions of this device. I've got to use it for a few hours now. I've done games, YouTube watching, browse the web, Fusion 360 editing, video editing, YouTube thumbnail creation on this. I've actually done quite a bit. Um, the most surprising thing about this is the comfortness holding it for an extended period of time. I really thought this was going to be heavier. I really thought that my wrists or my arms might get fatigued more holding this. But even after 35 minutes or 45 minutes of playing, it doesn't really feel like my arms are getting tired. It still feels comfortable to hold. So I got to give GPD credit for that. Let's go over the keyboard. The keyboard is not the main feature of this device. The fact that it's got a gamepad built in is the keyboard is somewhat of a compromise. Now it is a full functional keyboard. You can put all eight fingers on the keyboard and you can type. It's just a little awkward when it comes to some things like backspace isn't in its usual position. It's down lower. The apostrophe is down here. Tab is up here in this top corner. The numbers are half height, so when you try and click a number, you really have to focus on where you're pressing. Um, and the enter key is now where your pinky rests, so that's a little awkward as well. So there are some quirks that take some getting used to. After about 15 minutes of typing on it, I was somewhat proficient at it, and I wouldn't mind typing short or intermediate time frames. I just wouldn't type like a 15-page paper on this. As far as the controller goes, um, it is a little bit of an interesting layout. Thumbsticks are on the left-hand side for each thumb, buttons are on the right, and the shoulder buttons are in the position that you'd expect them to be. Um, it does take a little bit of getting used to. It probably took me like three minutes to adjust to it, 
but I've spent my whole life going between different style controllers, so it really isn't a big deal for me to adjust. This is the selling point of the device is that it does have a built-in X input controller. So what really had me sold on this device was the Thunderbolt 3 port. So I've got my eGPU set up here. I've got a GTX 1650 inside with a Pico PSU and a 120 watt power brick all hooked up to the ADT Link R43 SG TB3 adapter. Let's see what kind of game performance we can get on this with a eGPU. Here we have the GTA 5 benchmark, 720p high settings. I wanted to highlight this half of the benchmark because of the dynamic scene changes and the uh, calculations and explosions that happened during the car chase. This is the PS3 emulator, our PCS3, with Gundam Extreme vs. Full Boost. It's a Japanese Gundam game. It is very demanding. With my GTX 1650, Vulcan enabled, and TDP up on the CPU, we're getting right around 60 frames per second. There is a little bit of a dip here and there, but this is 100% playable, and I'm glad because this is one of my favorite PS3 games. This device is a compact, impressive, capable gaming machine, and I gotta give GPD credit for the design of this device. This will be the focus of my next few videos. I'll have a video on an updated dock, and I'll also go over the eGPU GTX 1650. I've got a bunch of iterations of this case for different graphics lengths, PCIe power, and different PSUs, so that'll be the focus of another video. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, maybe even subscribe, and stay tuned for more GPD WinMax.